Hey, welcome back. My name's Chris Jenkins. And this is the next part of the network install. And this is the, the probably the most interesting part or the the part which people haven't seen or the hardware people haven't seen to be more specific. And this is me, I'm going to install my router or router if you're in the US. Um, which is the USG X8 XG, I think. I think it's that way around. Um, and the reason why this is probably most interesting is because not many people have seen these before. They're still beta on, well at least at this time of filming, they're still beta on the Unify website. Um, I'm actually going to hands on one of them, and these things are beastly. Um, they can they can shift a ton of packets. And again, the reason why I went this way, because, um, as I said, same reason for buying the, the 48 ports. Um, Unify switch is it has the 10G uplink, and these are all 10G ports. So we now have a fully future-proof 10G network. Well, you know, up into the point where 10G becomes slow, but that's going to be a while. Um, so the most the things you notice about this the most is as a screen. Um, and I don't think this is based on the um, but there are uh, you know their enterprise the carrier grade hardware but they're even the carrier grade version of this which is I think the same almost the same configuration doesn't have a screen um, I guess because it's going to be tucked away in a server room somewhere and no one's going to ever look at it but this does have a screen which is pretty cool right now it's pretty limited it's going to just gives you some packets per second and throughput and stuff and what ports have what networks and configured on them um, I'm hoping there's going to be more stuff to, more stuff on it soon, but you know they're, they're still actively working on this. I mean, heavily actively working working on this, um, which is pretty cool. Let's run through some things which you may or not may not be aware of. Um, again, again, this is pretty heavy. A little bit lighter than this. Um, these two are the, the default WAN ports on this thing. Um, you got WAN one and WAN two. By default, this is uh, configured as a failover or disabled even. Um, and this is a this is a 1G port. So if you um, struggle to configure this block of four as 1G, which I can I'll go through later, because you have to fire you have to ping a JSON file at the config uh, at, the, at the controller to configure these to 1G from 10 10G. Um, this is 1G by default. So if you need to plug in your WAN connection and you either don't have an SFP module and it's 1G or it's 1G then you can just use this instead. Um, by default you know then it goes LAN 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now this talks about um, there's two things that can happen in the controller soon, I don't know when, uh, is one is that we were to configure the set, each set, change the link speeds so that you can change this from 10G to 1G so you can use SFP ports versus SFP plus ports. And the second thing is, in theory, this will apply to all the USGs as well, um, is that you'll be able to choose which port is a WAN port and which is a LAN port. So as I said right now, it only has WAN 1 and WAN 2, and you know, it's 1 through to 7 for LAN ports. So in the future, we could be have, this could be your WAN port, and these four could be your, your LAN ports. So um, I'm not sure when that's going to happen, but hopefully soon. Um, and the other cool thing about this, which is all the new hardware is going this way anyway, is modular power supplies. So you have backup power supplies if one fails and you can hot swap these. So I can pull, if I have, my, if I have another one, I can pull this out whilst it's running and then swap it out after it's gone. I guess as far as I'm aware, I haven't seen any details in the controller about when one of these power supplies fails. I'm guessing it's coming. I hope it's coming. Otherwise, you would know if you had two and one fails. Obviously, you've got one and one fails, and it doesn't boot. Um, that's pretty awesome. Again, that's super easy to take out, by the way. Just pull a little switch and pull it. And that clips. Um, apart from that, it's pretty sweet. Uh, right, I'm going to install this and wire it up. So, let's see in a second. All right, welcome back. Um, just for my little break, I'm going to install link this in here. So below my other cable management position, so it's going to sit there really nicely. So let's get some cables, so screws. Let's kind of get this thing in there. All 
Now, some of you may be thinking, why did I put a chaos management system below this? Um, well, there's two reasons. One, trying to run all the cables through this top one is going to be really hard. Like, it's 48 cables through this single unit. It's going to be pretty difficult. Um, so, I'm going to spread. I'll be able to do uh, spread them into this bottom one. Um, and two, um, most of my server stuff is going to be down the bottom of the rack. So, it's going to be going up, down, and around to get to server stuff. So, it's going to make sense for me to go down into this and through the back or and the sides, down to the server stuff. Um, so, I mean, and also, you know, a bit of spacing between racks. These don't get that hot, but a bit of spacing just helps alleviate any kind of helps dissipate heat. Right, so as I said before, I ran out of my own short cables, but we're actually going to do something a little bit interesting than that to wire this up. So, as I said before, the default LAN port is one and then it works its way through to seven up here, and then these two are WAN ports, which is why I actually have the two rubber grommets already taken out. I mean, you should leave them in until you put the module in, for obvious reasons. Uh, dust and junk getting in there. Um, but so, until I can move the config around, um, out of the box easily, this this is gonna have to stay LAN one, and this is gonna have to stay WAN one. Um, so, what have I got going in here? So, I actually have a direct connect copper cable and then from my uplink through to my nope not that one through to my WAN port so from here to here is going to be a direct attach copper cable and why did I do that? You know I ummed and ahed about using fiber to do the 10G uplink but one price um, one is a direct one of these direct attached copper cables so it's basically just Copper. It's a module and just has cable in and out of it. These are like half the price. So this cable is this cable, which is everything, you know, is cheaper than one of these modules uh, for fiber. So I would basically need to be three times the cost because I need two modules and then a piece of fiber. Um, whereas this is a, this is you know a third of the price. So for longer runs. I would 100% use fiber. For me, if I'm going from this rack to another one in my house, I would use fiber now, um, just because of the cable's thinner. Um, and the longer runs, there's just less to worry about. But from a, a switch to switch in your same rack, unless I guess there's a ton of interference, I would probably just, you know, these things are cheap and um, I have a spare one in case this one breaks. So that's what I did. So I'm going to start in here. I can't remember which way around it goes. I'm guessing that way. Yeah, there's a little click. Um, and again, these are from the fiber store, you know, a, a company that specializes in fiber, actually they do specialize in pretty cheap fiber, also um, sell copper. Now I'm trying to be a bit more gentle with this cable because one, it's more expensive than just standard RJ45, and two, because um, I think they're a little bit more delicate. So that's just me trying to be, that's me being careful. <laughs> cool. All right, and as I said on previous videos, I set one, one and two of my uplinks. There's nothing in two yet, which is why it's black, not white, because it's not from the loom. Uh, but one here is from my CenturyLink ONT, which is with their terminal from their fiber to Ethernet. So that's going to go from here all the way through, down and around into here, not into zero. Um, and why? Why not to zero? Because I want to go into WAN one because WAN two is technically meant to be for like a load balance or failover. Um, so for this, I actually have another piece, another module. Again, these are from Fiber Store, and all it is is a module which just takes an RJ45 cable. Pretty simple. Same again. Goes in. I think that closes first. Goes in. Oh, I had it wrong around. <laughs> in. Just show a click. A little click there, and that's it. And these actually, these are really in. So you actually have to pull this flap up. That push releases a little latch on the inside, and now it comes out. By, but by default, when that's down, you can't pull it out because it latches to the inside of the, the rack. So it means that someone just can't yank this out, or if they pull on a cable, it's just not going to fall out. Again, I'm going to change the rest of my blue cables for orange, just to note, like just switch linking. Um, and then this blue cable, the blue and blacks are going to be uplinks and. Uh, 
any kind of incoming connection. So and from here, I'm going to try and get it all the way to here neatly. All right. So in the next video, that's going to be super short, it's basically just put my cloud key in into one of these and then um, parent it all on. Um, so thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.